In the previous lecture, we have constructed a confidence interval for the population mean mu when the population standard deviation sigma is known. So now we're going to look at an example. The manufacturer of rechargeable electric shavers wants to find an interval estimate for the mean working time of the shavers between charges. A random sample of 20 shavers has a mean of 452 minutes and a standard deviation of 9 minutes. We know that if the population standard deviation sigma is known, then x bar minus mu divided by the standard error follows the standard normal distribution. However, in this example, only the sample standard deviation s is known, but not the population standard deviation sigma. Now, W.S. Gossett, an English statistician, published an article in 1908 in which the t distribution is described. And we can use the t distribution to set up a confidence interval for mu when sigma is unknown. For a random sample of size n from a normal distribution, the sampling distribution of the statistic t, which is x bar minus mu divided by s over square root n, is the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So here you can see that the statistic t almost looks the same as the statistic z, except that now we divide not by sigma over square root n, but we divide by s, the sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of n. Now we know what the standard normal distribution looks like, um, but what is the t-distribution? The t-distribution is very similar to the standard normal distribution. It's also symmetrical and bell-shaped as around zero, but it has heavier tails than the standard normal distribution. And the mean and the variance of a t-distribution with new degrees of freedom is the mean is zero, and the standard deviation is the square root of new divided by nu minus 2, where nu is the degrees of freedom. So let's have a look at a t-distribution and see how it compares with the standard normal distribution. Okay, on this slide I have the standard normal distribution in blue, and then I have the t-distribution with one degree of freedom in red. So you can see that the T distribution is also symmetrical around zero and bell shaped, but the tails of these of this T distribution is heavier. That means that there is more area underneath the tails of the T distribution. Now, if we change the degrees of freedom, let's change the degrees of freedom or increase the degrees of freedom for this T distribution. And here you can see that for a t-distribution with 20 degrees of freedom, the t-distribution starts to approach the standard normal distribution. And this approximation becomes um, better and better as my degrees of freedom increases. Okay, and on this slide we have a typical um, table for the t-distribution and we will use this when we look up t-values. So now we can find a confidence interval for the population mean mu if sigma, the population standard deviation, is unknown. If x1 up to xn is a random sample from a normal distribution, then a 1 minus alpha confidence interval for mu is given by x bar minus the t value times the s over square root n for the lower limit and x bar plus the t value times s over square root n. For example, if I take a sample of size 20, then my n is 20 and n minus 1 will be 19. If my alpha, uh, or rather if I set up a 95% confidence interval, 
then 1 minus alpha will be 0 0.95. So alpha will be 0 0.05. Alpha over 2 will be 0 0.025. 1 minus alpha over 2 will be 0 0.975. So if we want to find T with 19 degrees of freedom and probability 0 0.975, then we can look this up in our T tables. So in the rows of the T tables, we have DF, the degrees of freedom. So we want to look at 19 degrees of freedom. Our probability is 0 0.975, so the corresponding T value will be 2.093. Okay, and now we can set up a 95% confidence interval for the mean working time between charges for the shavers. So X bar is just a sample mean of 452. We subtract our t value times s over square root n. s is 9, n is 20, and we have looked up our t value as 2.093. So we can substitute everything and we get an interval estimate for the mean working time between charges. And that is between 447.8 and 456.1. Now you will see that this confidence interval here is when my random sample come from a normal distribution. If I'm working with, uh, a, a, if I want to set up a confidence interval for the population mean mu and sigma is unknown um, and the population is not normal but my sample size n is large, then a confidence interval for mu, for the population mean, is given by x bar minus z times s over square root n and x bar plus z times s over square root n. So then we make use of the z tables and not the t tables. But this is only valid when we are working with large sample sizes.